is Spencer, and today we're working on the uh, Project 914 again. Um, I've been putting in a lot of work off camera, um, a ton of work actually. I've got the Mega Square completely finished and assembled. And before I start putting everything in the car, I do want to get this engine bay cleaned up just because I don't want to be putting nice, clean, brand new wiring into a nasty engine bay. So I went and picked myself up some purple power and some rags. And uh, we're gonna get this thing cleaned up. Before I clean it up, I want to see and try see if I can flip the intake manifold. Um, my reason for that is currently the intake manifold is in the same orientation that it was um, when it was in the Subaru when the Subaru engine was in the actual Subaru. I want to flip it 180 degrees because right now the intake only has a really small amount of space in between that and. Um, basically this part of the car right here um, and I want to flip it because there's a lot more room to the front and I'll actually show you that real quick so let's see so basically that end of the intake manifold you can see the end of the throttle body there it's gonna go this way so I'm gonna try taking it apart well I have to relocate the alternator but uh, probably over here where the AC compressor was originally. But uh, yeah, that's what I want to do is try to flip the intake manifold. So before I get cleaning, I'm going to take the intake manifold off. It'll just make it a little bit easier for cleaning as well since then I can get under there. But yeah, guys, I guess we can uh, get started. So guys, in order to gain access to the intake manifold, it looks like I'm going to have to take the fuel rails off. So I'm going to pop the fuel rails off. I might have to take these fuel lines off as well. I'm not quite sure just yet. But uh, I'm just going to start dis disassembling everything. There's the manifold. Um, looks like these fuel lines might be attached to the bottom. Let's see. Well, since these fuel lines are attached to it, um, attached to the intake manifold, I'm just gonna take the rubber fuel lines off with the, just take these hose clamps off and slip them off. There we go. Just lost a little bit of fuel. Luckily, the fuel pump isn't hooked up. For, hasn't been hook up, hooked up for a while, so there wasn't too much fuel left in those lines. Uh, but now I think it should be completely free. There we go. Here she is. So first things first, I'm just gonna get this intake manifold all cleaned up. Um, this is a good time for me to just get everything clean, degrease the whole engine as well, because. Um, it's all going to be apart and uh, no wirings in there or anything so I'll just spray this all down with degreaser, uh, scrub it a bit with a brush and then let it dry out for a bit. So I'm going to let that intake manifold and uh, those fuel rails dry out for just a little bit outside and then I'm going to end up steam using my steamer to clean them up a bit. Um, but now I can actually move the engine bay and I'm going to work from the top down because if I go from the top up, by the time I clean the top, it'll run all the way down to the bottom. So I'm going to make sure you always work from the top down. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So guys, I'm going to take this off as well because the coolant temperature sensor from the factory is right here 
and I'm going to be replacing the factory one with a uh, GM coolant temperature sensor. Uh, so I'll have to take this one out and tap it for that uh, bigger size. So I'm just going to take it off to make that job a lot easier. So, let's see, let me get it to focus. That's gonna be the cool and temperature sensor right there. So uh, I'll take that out and retap it for the new one. Check that out. Just that did, you know, made a huge difference obviously. Cause it was bad. And see, so you can see that. That's obviously that oil pressure switch right there leaking and that's the only wet oil um this head gasket uh looks to be all right i mean there's no wet oil or anything over here near there and there never has been it's always just been dirty all around and then this one looks like all this oil is coming from that uh, oil pressure switch and then this one hopefully the head gasket's okay on as well it doesn't look too bad um, it doesn't look like it's leaking or anything. I think the valve cover gaskets are leaking on both sides. I'm almost uh, positive of that actually, because they're both filthy. Um, but those are easy and cheap, so not too worried. Uh, I guess I'm just going to get started with the degreaser, guys. Um, it's not too exciting to show, so I'm just going to spray it on there and scrub and try to get as much of this gunk off as possible. And then once I'm done with that, I'll probably move the valve covers, um, you know, basically there and then all along the sides of the firewall as well. I'm going to start try to get this foam stuff stripped off of the firewall as well and then clean up over here and then once I'm done with all that I'll move to the bottom of the engine which is probably the worst part um, but I'm basically doing it like this because you know just like I said so it doesn't run and get the bottom of it dirty but then I'm also going to paint the engine bay before I put all the wiring in. So uh, I think I'm just going to paint it black just like I did the hood in the trunk just to keep it simple and clean. Yeah, coming along nice so I'll bring you guys back when this is looking a bit better. So I thought I'd bring you guys back just real quick. Um, I'm still in the middle of cleaning it. Uh, as you can see though it's looking a lot better. There's the intake manifold but uh, that head in particular is still pretty dirty. Um, but I thought I'd bring you back to show you guys the uh, alternator setup. Obviously, since the alternator was right in the middle, since I'm doing this flip, I do have to relocate the alternator. Um, so what I did is this is the stock alternator bracket right here that it's on. But normally, it's flipped over the other side. So if I lift it, and if it, I mean, it hits, but if it could go all the way around to the other side, that's where it goes from the factory. Um, it's just flipped around. So I flipped it to the other side and then I'm going to just fabricate out of steel a bracket that can go in these holes that uh, I can thread into these holes down oh, oh, let's get it down here and then up to here so that there's a hole for that other side so that it's still adjustable I'll have to notch it something like that so that it's uh, just adjustable like it was from the factory and then I'll have to find a belt that fits. But that's how it looks, guys. It's coming together pretty good. It's nice and uh, clean. I think I've decided... I also had to delete the uh, IACV valve right there. That's where that would have been. Um, and because uh, it would have hit the alternator, I just don't want to deal with it. I'll make sure the tune is okay so it's not as necessary. And this PCV valve right here, I'm going to remove that. And that's where I'm going to put the uh, intake air temp sensor. Okay, I think that's all for now. I'm going to get back to cleaning. So guys, in the last clip I was uh, telling you how I needed to make an alternator bracket uh, since I was doing this uh, intake manifold flip. Since then, I have uh, fabbed up this little what, this little piece. Sorry, this wire's hanging right in the way. And that's going to be the uh, second bracket piece. And uh, mounted on there, it seems to be nice and solid. Um, 
basically the two holes on that will just fit into these two holes right there and then it has a slider so it's actually adjustable as well um, like the factory one was um, so my next step before I can put this manifold back on is to create since I uh, got rid of this IECV valve that's normally mounted here I need to make a block off plate for that um, hole in the manifold because that just goes straight into the intake manifold um, so I'll just create that out of sheet aluminum and alright guys so there's the uh, block off plate that I made for the IECV um, and then now what I'm going to be working on is this hole right here was originally for the PCV valve and that's where the intake air temp sensor is going to go so right here I've got a tap so uh, I've got to go run and get a drill bit real quick to drill that out just a little bit more but then I'll uh, tap it for three so I thought I'd bring you guys real back real quick just to show you this um, here's that coolant crossover pipe with the um, that's the coolant temperature sensor tapped in there and threaded in and then I also have my intake manifold all cleaned up and everything down here with the intake air temp sensor right there so that's how that's gonna work and then let's move the engine bay there is the new oil pressure switch as well as the finished uh, bracket as you can see it's painted and everything there for the alternator um, so I'm gonna throw this I also have let me show you there's a new o-rings for the uh, crossover pipe the coolant crossover pipe so I'm gonna throw this coolant crossover pipe back on um, and then throw the intake manifold back on as well as the fuel lines and injectors. I also got new o-rings for the injectors so those will go on as well. But I'm going to throw all those back on real quick and I'll be right back. So guys, uh, just finished putting the intake manifold back on. Um, so let me show you guys that really quick. All finished up. Um, I'll have to attach my fuel lines right there, which I just need to cut them shorter. Um, and I also need to figure out a situation for the throttle cable, but besides that, it's all mounted in there. Um, there's that coolant temp sensor and the intake air temp sensors over there. I uh, guess there's not really much more to show. That's about it. Um, I guess that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Um, let me put my camera back up on my tripod. Um, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching. Got a decent amount of stuff done. I got a bunch of seals replaced and stuff, which is just uh, not very exciting, but stuff that really needs to get done uh, since I want this to be nice and reliable. Um, next episode, I'll probably be finishing up cleaning that thing up. I'll be getting the firewall is covered in a bunch of foam and adhesive. Get all that out and then uh, paint, paint it and start putting the wiring in. Uh, getting real close. I think every single sensor is mounted except for an oxygen sensor in the exhaust and I don't need that to start the car. So next episode should be actually wiring it up for the first time. Um, so that's exciting. Hopefully we can hear it run here pretty soon. Um, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed it make sure you hit like, comment if you have any questions or comments, um, and subscribe if you want to. Um, I'll see you guys later. Peace!